Hello guys, in this video we will see model 2 of machine design that is design of curved beams and thick cylinder. Actually this model is divided into two parts. First part is design of curved beams and second part is thick cylinder. So we will go for the first part that is design of curved beams. As I have mentioned over here it is PSG 6.2. We have already seen PSG 6.8. If you remember, it was for buckling of screw. So, design of curved beam you can go and find on PSG 6.2. Okay. So, before going for the definition of curved beam, I would like to give some examples of curved beams which you have seen already. So first example is C-clamp. We have already seen the design of C-clamp. So we know the structure or the body of C-clamp. It is in curved shape. Then crane hook, then rings, even your bracelet, rings, U-frames, chains. There are lots of examples like frames of presses. Just keep in mind all these examples while defining and designing the curve beams okay so we will move to the definition of curve beam so a curve beam is defined as a beam in which the neutral axis in unloaded condition is curved instead of straight okay so this is the first definition and which says neutral axis in unloaded condition is curved instead of straight okay so simply if you see the straight beam, if you see the straight beam, then neutral axis you will find it as straight. In curved beam, you will find it as curved. So it is very simple. Okay, so here we have a straight beam. Okay, before application of this load P, neutral axis of this beam was straight. But after application of the load P, the beam is bended like this and neutral axis is curved okay but this is after application and when we have seen this we have seen this in saw that is derivation of bending moment formula now what is bending moment formula may i serve you elizabeth rani this is a short trick to remember the formula may i serve you elizabeth rani m for moment moment of inertia stress and all okay so now what is point over here is this beam we can't call it as curved beam because after application of load the neutral axis become curved so we want beam like c clamp or like hook we know crane hook right so crane hook you if you remember or if you you have seen the crane hook then it having neutral axis like this so it is already curved before application of the load it is curved then we will call it as curved beam and this is the example of straight beam so whatever we have seen in song flexural formula that is nothing but straight beam one simple definition also there the beam which is originally curved before applying the bending moment is curved beam. very simple originally curved before applying the bending moment is curved beam okay Okay, so now we will see the difference between the straight beam and curved beam. So, one point we have already seen that is the definition of curved beam. Okay, that says the neutral axis in unloaded condition is curved. So, that one is first uh, point in difference. Okay, and the second point is there are two axes usually. Okay, first is a neutral axis and second one is centroidal axis so you know the centroidal we have already seen in the mechanics what is a centroidal so i'm not going to explain it but in straight beam if you can see the neutral axis and centroidal axis is coinciding with each other whereas in curved beam centroidal axis and neutral axis is not coinciding with each other or does not coincide Okay, so first point is centroidal axis and neutral axis is coinciding. In curved beam, it is 
not coincide okay so now the so second point is if you see the bending stress distribution then you will find it as a straight line or it is a linear whereas in curved beam the bending distribution is non linear okay and third one is if you see the tension and compression tension and compression both have the same value if tension is 100 then compression is 100 but in this case in this case they are not having the same value you can see this is a different and this is a difference as neutral axis is not coinciding with the centroidal axis and this curve passing through the neutral axis then this value the compression value is less than the tension value so this is a difference between straight beam and curved beam now we will see the assumption made in stress analysis of curved beam few assumption we have already seen in song in derivation of bending moment formula first assumption is the beam is subjected to pure bending what is meaning of pure bending is there is no other load except bending there is no shear no torque nothing only bending okay second assumption is material of the beam is isotropic and homogeneous and obeys hooke's law what does it indicates isotropic means this is a material and it is having same property throughout it is having same property throughout homogeneous means it is having same material throughout okay so isotropic same property homogeneous same material and obeys hooke's law we know the hooke's law okay so we have learned the hooke's law that is stress is directly proportional to strain so it is within within elastic limit okay or within proportionality limit all right the third is plane sections perpendicular to the axis of the beam remains plane even after the bending one more time we will move to the theory of simple bending there also we have seen this assumption that is plane section you can see this section it is plane before bending and after bending you can see it is plane only it is not changing its shape it is not like this okay it is changing it is not changing its shape it is plane and also it is perpendicular to the neutral axis here also it is perpendicular to the neutral axis next is the stress induced do not exceed elastic limit it is nothing but again hooke's law okay next assumption is each layer of beam is free to expand or contract independent of the layer above or below it important point is independent okay so to understand this you will see the phenomena of layers that is every material any component any material is made up of layer of by layer means number of layers together okay whenever one layer moves or have moment adjacent layer will offer adjacent layer will offer resistance means this layer is moving like this then this layer is moving then this layer this layer will offer resistance to movement of this layer actually we have seen one definition or one term called as viscosity in fluid mechanics viscosity is nothing but resistance to the moment of one layer of fluid over the adjacent layer means if this layer is moving then it will offer then adjacent layer will offer resistance to its movement it is viscosity we we having one assumption over here it says each layer of the beam is free to expand or contract independent of the layer above or below it means if you see we having in curved beam in curved beam we having tension on one side and contraction or compression in other side so if we consider it by layer by layer then one layer offers resistance to the moment of other layer but now according to the assumption what we are saying there is no resistance they are independent of each other okay last one is the modulus of elastic in tension and compression are equal so that is modulus of elasticity that is e if you remember from song then it is modulus of elasticity are e bulk modulus and g that is modulus of rigidity they are same in tension and compression okay so we will move to the next part that is 
derivation of stress equation in case of curve B.